folks and how is it going and welcome back to another video and an absolutely beautiful day here so we have come to the beach again it's going to be quite a theme here on this particular channel beaches because i live so close to them and they're all so so beautiful but the aim of the game today is is to not necessarily focus on the grand scheme of things what we're looking to achieve today is nice simple minimalist images and abstract images those kinds of images are something that i really enjoy and it's something that i never really do unless they happen almost by accident um, so today we're here solely to do this the eagle-eyed among you will probably recognize this particular beach from one of the previous videos this is castellejo and um, it's got that big gnarly rock it's a beautiful beautiful place and has lots and lots of rocks which will hopefully lend itself well for us to focus in, zoom in, and really create nice abstract kind of scenes. So that's the aim of the game today. So let's have a wander down and see what we can see, and uh, let's get to it. Well, we've arrived at our little spot. So you can see here behind me, if you can, if the sun isn't too bright, tide is coming in. So we have to be super duper mindful of that. I was hoping that the tide was going to be a little high because it'll just give us the opportunity to be able to take advantage of the water ebbing and flowing all through uh, these rocks and stuff. And as you can see here, there's some serious crashing and bashing happening here as well. So we're absolutely absolutely gonna take some pictures of that so yeah no it's really really wonderful so the aim of the game like i say is nice simple minimalism there's a fair bank of cloud on this on the horizon but a small bit of high cloud so you never know we might catch a bit of color and if if we do i'm sure the inner epic vista landscape photographer in me will uh rear its head and we'll uh see if we can take a few nice pictures of the sunset as well because we're going to be here for a little bit so uh fingers and toes crossed. So let's get the gear and let's get shooting. You know, it's very important. Uh, and I've said this on a previous video, just to simply point your camera down some absolutely wonderful repeating patterns in the sand. And with the light, it's just catching and adding such wonderful contrast of light and shadow. It really reminds me of the sand dunes of Namibia. There's also some just random debris and some lovely rocks just popping up out of the sand. And again, just using that light to emphasize the contrast of light and shadow is really really fantastic and uh, i'll pop up a few of these uh images that i've taken now and uh, you can have a look let's hope they turned out this is the first photograph that i captured with the intent to create this minimalist scene that you see before you now the repeating patterns and the way that the sand waves through the frame really lends itself well to a simple basic scene Expanding on this idea further, I chose to switch to a portrait orientation, taking advantage of a really narrow depth of field. This image really helps to bring your eye through the frame and the repeating patterns and the slight bit of light that's catching and creating this contrast really help to emphasize and bring home the idea that this scene is minimal and one that leaves your imagination up to decide how deep you want to go when it comes to conjuring up ideas out of this frame. Finding this rock just protruding out of the sand was such a treat and the shadow that it cast on the right side of the frame and the way that the sun really caught and illuminated the left really helped to emphasize contrast. But I am super happy that this is just a small rock that just pops up out of the sand and really emphasizes the idea that simply looking down with your camera is one that we all should take advantage of. For the last image in this set, this is a simple bit of debris that I found randomly in the sand. But what it has done is created this really lovely long shadow that brings us up through the right hand side of the frame. And like the previous image, the light that illuminates the left really helps to emphasize this play of contrast and light and shadow and the piece of debris acting as that catalyst to create that contrast. Wonderful. There's some absolutely magic, magic stuff happening out here in the water, as you can, I hope you can see behind me. So I'm going to put the 100 to 400 on and let's zoom in and let's see if we can capture some crashing and bashing.
Well, these rocks are absolutely getting smashed. It's really, really fantastic. Uh, you know, one of the nice things about photographing just seascapes and just water in general is as the light fades, you inevitably need to increase your shutter speed. So the images that you capture, you know, when you first arrive and the sun is up and high are nice and sharp and crisp and like frozen in time. Whereas then the, as the light fades, you really need to then start to open up your uh, shutter speed. And then you end up then introducing some really lovely uh, motion in the water, which creates this whole other worldly uh, ethereal feel. And that's one thing that we're looking to certainly take advantage of here uh, this evening. So we've got about an hour or so before the sun sets and let's shoot on and see what magic we can muster. I am absolutely thrilled with how this image turned out in processing. The depth that that 400 millimeters creates, the arching wave in the back catching the light and illuminating green only adds to the whole energy of this frame. The small cascades rolling off the rock face and the light catching along the side. This image came together so wonderfully and is a really good example that shooting in not so ideal conditions can still yield wonderful results. For me, this is the culmination of what I ultimately set out to achieve, while the previous sets of images that we've just looked at are super simple minimalist frames. This still holds that element of abstract minimalism, but yet still yields this epic result. So, this is absolutely wonderful. The light is a bit intermittent, so it's actually just going behind these big rocks over here at the moment, but it's really, really fantastic. And I found this really nice little scene. Just looking down, you got the green of the moss here on the rock, and then I'm cutting the frame right in half, and I'm using uh, about a half a second exposure to really drag out that water and emphasize the movement on the opposite side of the frame. So I, I'll pop that up on the screen for you now, and uh, fingers crossed, it looks good. I really, really love the play of movement on the left and static color on the right, a wonderful contrast. And again, this really could just be a drone shot, but so wonderfully is just me looking down and taking advantage of the catching bit of light, illuminating the green and slowing the shutter down enough to create that motion as it pours through the left-hand side of the frame, creating this contrast of movement and staticness. I really love the punch of color that the light created, and I am super happy with the overall scene. This is another image that I captured not too far away from the one we were just looking at. Again, emphasizing that creative control over using movement and static elements in the frame. I really love the way the bottom of the half is this swirling vortex of moving water, while the top half of the frame is just this dark rock that's just been saturated and soaked by the water. And it creates this really fantastic contrast of both shadowy darkness and bright, moving highlight. One of the things that's really fascinating about using this 100 to 400 is it just gives you such great opportunity to really focus in on a scene and to really just hone in on a composition. And even though we are standing here in this epic landscape that we find ourselves in, just focusing and zooming in on one tiniest little section also creates this idea of a grand landscape onto its own. And it's a really fascinating thing to photograph. The aim of the game here is I've just focused in on some of these rocks that are popping up and I've just set my shutter to high continuous. And I'm just playing around with the different shutter speeds that the light really allows me to capture. So I don't know whether the faster ones are gonna look better or the slightly slower shutter speeds. I always tend to lean towards slightly slower shutter speeds. So we will see how they uh, turn out after the fact. But as you can see, the, uh, the water is coming in. So we have to be super mindful. And, uh, but it's a really, really absolutely wonderful opportunity to use this 100 to 400 and, uh, and focus in on some nice intimate scenes. So this first image is a good example of a slightly faster shutter speed. What this has enabled me to do is create an image that almost freezes the action in motion which is a really, really wonderful aesthetic you can take advantage of when shooting these kinds of frames. Utilizing this idea of abstract minimalism, the way that the light catches on the rock face and the, and the cascading water that rolls off really ties this image together really, really lovely. 
I tend to lean towards more of a slower shutter speed. And for me, this image really captured that sense of motion and energy that the frame deserves, in my opinion. Consuming the rock, the waves just tumbled over with such energy and such power. And I shot this at probably around 0.4 of a second, so a very slow shutter speed. And what it really enabled me to do was create this fantastic sense of motion and dynamism in the frame. I really, really like this image. Kaboom! <laughs> this picture is so fantastic. I zoomed out ever so slightly from the rocks that we were just looking at and panned just a little bit to the left just to find this rock protruding from the water surface. And one thing that really caught my eye was the layers of energy and motion that was in this scene. In the foreground, you've got this tumbling water. In the midground, you've got this static rock. And then in the background, you've just got this raw ocean energy as it pours towards us. So like I mentioned in one of the other videos, I'm no real black and white kind of aficionado. I never really tend to convert images to black and white, only just to kind of play around. And this is one of those instances. So I would be absolutely so curious to know in the comments if this works because I, I don't really know. To me, I love the kind of fine art style the black and white conversion brings to the image, but then looking at the previous image in color, I really do like that kick of green that's there. And I feel somehow that that's lost in the black and white conversion. But I still really like this. There's a high punchy contrast. But again, I am no uh, black and white photography aficionado. So I would absolutely love to hear uh, from, from, from you all in the comments. So do please leave a comment and let me know if I was any way on point with this black and white image. So I've uh, decided to take advantage of this sturdy rock and stay here to chance my arm for another little bit longer because I, what I'm really looking at right now is just so, so amazing. The water and the way that it's crashing and breaking, it's just so wonderful. So I've just focused in on a small scene. I'm just trying to focus in on the water and its energy and its movement. Just again, playing around with different kinds of shutter speeds. Uh, as I say, the there, you, I don't know if you can see in the frame here, but there's a big bank of clouds. So we're not getting any real direct light, which would be absolutely fantastic. But what it is offering me is a good opportunity to slow my shutter down without having to put any filters on and to try and create some nice movement and drama in this frame. This next set of images, I think, are some of my favorites from this entire day. It's nothing. And that is such a refreshing thing to photograph. It's a simple matter of light, shadow and movement in the frame. I really love the cool blue tones that the light enabled me to develop in post-processing and enhancing the contrast really ends up drawing me through this frame to just this abstract nothingness. Really, really delighted with how this one turned out. Again, like the previous image, the cool tones really help to emphasize the mood of this frame. I really love the way that the light catches as the water splashes up on the left side of the frame. And it just creates this slight highlight to add further to the abstract nature of this image. For me, I think this one is my favorite one, but absolutely do let me know which is yours because abstract images and abstract photography are so subjective. For me though, this just encapsulates that sense of motion and that element of freezing the frame. This was shot at probably around one sixth of a second. So it enabled me just to slow the shutter enough to drag the water a little bit, but also also have a fast enough shutter speed to be able to capture that final catch of light that we see on the left. This one and the next image are very much in the same vein as the previous. It's just more focused in and zoomed in. These were shot at around 400 millimeters, pretty much just looking down from where I was standing. It really stood out for me as encapsulating that sense of abstract photography.
So here we are again. I've just found this one big kind of lumpy rock sticking out of the sand and I'm taking full advantage of it. All around the rock, there's got this wonderful patterns that the water has created in the sand, which really lending itself well to, um, I'm laughing here because Orla is just about to get swept away. But uh, the uh, water has really created these lovely divots in the sand, which really lend itself well to create these really nice kind of minimalist frames, which I really, really do enjoy. Now, we don't have any kind of direct light happening, which is OK. The images, they might be a little flat, which is OK. The whole idea behind this is just for us to come out and take photographs, which we're all thoroughly enjoying doing right now and um and i've also there's some nice reflections happening here i don't know if you can see them in this particular frame and as the water is receding it really lends itself well to just capture and just like earlier these repeating patterns in the sand that we photographed earlier we can capture those same kind of elements here whether it be in the sand at our feet or as the water retreats out and um you know ultimately creates these patterns as the water rushes in and almost sweeps me away So there's such a beautiful gradient of color in the clouds right now that I've just tilted my camera up. And again, I'm all the way in at 400 mil and it's really creating this soft, soft, lovely glow in the clouds. The sunset is really gorgeous this evening. And uh, again, it's just a super abstract kind of scene, kind of reflects what we were photographing just a moment ago with the catching light in the water as the water rushes towards me now. Um, but uh, some really, really lovely, um, really, really lovely light in the sky. So, um, yup. <laughs> so hopefully the camera doesn't fall over, but uh, we're, we're firing on nonetheless, but we'll probably pack up uh, pretty soon and uh, head home because it's, it's getting dark. <laughs> so that's so meta. We're photographing the photographer that didn't make any sense. But anyways, I think we'll probably call it an evening there, folks. It's been an absolutely fantastic, fantastic day out photographing. And even looking at the sky here now, it's there's still some light really catching in the clouds and it's a real, real treat. So I think we'll just, me and Orla, enjoy this scene together. And um... so look, I know I said minimalist photography uh, as much as we can, but with a scene like this and the light that's catching now, at you. I, I can't help myself. It's so, so beautiful. And I'm getting this absolutely wonderful reflection of this big, big rock here. And it's just making for some absolutely fantastic images. The light is so, so beautiful. As you can see here, it's just, it's so, so magic. So I, like I said, I can't help myself. So apologies, but I'll end the video now. I promise this time. So do please, if you want, feel free to like and subscribe and absolutely do leave a comment. So I really do appreciate the comments and, uh, and, and feedback. I, I always uh, enjoy reading that. So for now, I'll sign off. And this time uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take it easy, everybody.